Okay, I'm going to close meeting to order. Everybody will stand. Let us pray. Almighty gracious God, tonight we think about all those who have to work out in the heat, especially we think about firefighters who are fighting the fire in Taneyville, a uh, grass fire, and I understand they have it under control. That's the six, six o'clock fire alarm, by the way. Um, but we just ask you to bind with them and be with them and watch over them and the many others who have to be outside. We do praise you that for our time in this meeting in the cool of the room and ask your blessings on our nation, on our city, on all our elected officials and those running for office as well. Provide with us and be with us. May we be a blessing unto you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. working in a school district for years things are just not you know decisions that are to be made Tim can agree with that there can't you that not everything is <laughs> cut and dry well I have got to really just exist. Exist. <laughs> <laughs> so and that goes for everyone I'm not just speaking to the board obviously but um, definitely speaking to anyone else who's here if you have questions feel free to ask um, you can find me on Facebook email Anything like that here, I'll give you guys some little please. Thank you. Well, I do believe experience, especially, I mean, it's anywhere, but Taney County, sometimes you're seeing some of the same people. Yes. And um, 
and so you kind of have a little bit of background on that yes. as you see them again and that I you know experience is always good with anything so yeah. So, yeah. so I just want to introduce myself I appreciate you all as well reach out if you have questions later and I'm gonna hang out for a little bit okay perfect okay. thank you Hi. thank you <laughs> All right, second and final reading of bill number 543, reaffirming gross receipts tax on electric company. Motion for the second final reading of bill number 543, by title only. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bill number 543, an ordinance of the City of Forsyth, Missouri, reaffirming the gross receipts tax to be imposed upon electric corporations conducting business within the city and matters related thereto. Approval of Bill 543. And an act. And an act. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, accept annexation petition from Jellystone Campground, Great Escapes. We move that we accept the annex, accept the annexation, annexation, I can almost say that, petition from Jellystone Campground. Okay, before we do, I'd want to make sure that everybody realizes that Jellystone has purchased an additional piece of land next to adjoining theirs to increase their park, if you haven't, aren't aware of that yet, before we do this but um and they're wanting all of their part of it is in central Tanner <coughs> county and part of it is in ours so they would like to have it all as one which makes sense if, i mean you'd want part of your you want all your land on within and so um anyway that's what we're doing i want to make sure everybody realizes that before we go ahead go ahead i'm sorry to interrupt you We have a motion to accept. Okay. Second. Second. Yeah, second. Second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Perfect. We'll need to arrange a publication of the paper before the next meeting. Okay. Which paper, Bill? Brent's oh, Daily Brent News. Daily News is the only thing we can use nowadays. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Anthem Dental Insurance Renewal. Angela, uh, you've got the renewal information in your packets tonight it increases i think 97 cents per employee per month for the coming year and i would suggest that we accept that before yeah no mind. kidding that is only that is very little increase which is really nice Second. all in favor aye aye aye, aye. 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 All right, resolution 714-22, accepting MoDOT municipal agreement. This municipal agreement is so uh, we can actually, it's with MoDOT so that we can work on that hill down at the park, and especially since the park is coming out of the water. No, um, we can, oh, it's not, I thought it was for that. <laughs> Okay, and the ADA, so this was a different one. Okay, oh, I can't keep them all straight. I apologize. All right, so this is for the ADA work along this highway. Mo, I don't know if you know, but MoDOT is, you know, they don't, they're easements, they don't really want much done on them um, for liability issues and stuff like that. So we have to have these agreements. Okay. And, and they are they are doing some good things I, if anybody wants to see it I highlighted it you can just read it better if you highlight if it's highlighted because one of the big things that I noticed they're gonna install is they're gonna install audible um, at the crosswalk at Casey's and the McDonald's right there they're gonna install an audit it says install audible pedestrian push button and siding to poles okay. so if it's going to be audible, hopefully everybody can hear it. That just made that a little safer. So that's some of the things they're doing down, down the road. But no, if anybody wants to read it, if it's not highlighted, you can't. I can't see it, and I have pretty decent eyes. So. And I know we're in the middle of this, but before I forget, 
when we return this to them, speaking of that intersection, I remember mentioning this to Chris years ago, and I've seen it several times, where if somebody is coming off of Koi, <coughs> the light is red, and they're in the right-hand turn lane, but the light is red, they can still turn. They right? can, and they but got the, hit the, because of that pole. They about hit children. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. I know. <clears throat> Yeah, it's it's a bad, it is a very very bad corner, and it's not just that. Um, it's it's the kids. My complaint, as far as this, you know, where the the sidewalk part of the school coming out, it crosses over, and then they got to cross back, and they're crossing back half the time between school buses, and um, and then to get to that light that has the. Thing. And so, you know, at some point it would be nice to be able to continue a sidewalk all the way down on the one side so that we do not have kids crossing over and then crossing back where there's no actual crosswalk. Right. Or if, if the audible thing that they're talking about has a specific, like, you know, 15 seconds to cross. Right. That would be helpful. Yeah. Well, hopefully they you know, if, they volley, if they're going to put that in, they take a look at and adjust the programming of the turning and everything. And I mean, because the push buttons, if there's a pedestrian there and they push the button, it should cancel out turning people and not allow them to turn. It doesn't, though. It should. It should, but it, it, should, it, should, but it doesn't. So they need, when to, you're, so they need to take yeah, a look at the programming. Got, right. And when you've got teenagers pulling out of school. Yes. And all they remember from the test is, I can turn right on red. After I, I stop. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. They're not looking for those little kids. Right. And, and it's also, hard to see around those poles anyway, to see the kids if you're trying to ease around there and you're still looking the other way to see if there's anything coming. Then you start inching out there, there's kids there. So, yeah. And if somebody pushes the crosswalk button and now delays the light turning red or green, for seven seconds, so somebody can at least get going across. But you're right, right on red, that doesn't help. No, I've seen it can numerous we, times. Can we make that <coughs> no right turn on red? You will not, I don't think, not, can, I don't think you can. Right? Yeah, I think so. you can, even though it's You can request it if you could show it. You could suggest it, yeah. 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 But we, but we doesn't can. mean they, they'll do a study then at that point. Right. The and I think they've done a study on the other side. They had over there, but I don't know what that one is, was exactly for. Just they don't really tell us, market, but yeah. yeah. How much we go down our street? Yeah, they're checking us up. You think so? I mean, even though right on red between certain times might be effective, I just don't know the process. Right. It's been years, so I don't know who we can talk to anymore. So like, if that corner wasn't angled the way it is, mm -hmm. then that's the prop part of the problem, and the poles being right on the corner there, um, that is where most of it is. And, um, but we've had kids, um, either- It's been close. It has been yeah. so close because they run between the buses to come back across to go to McDonald's. And it's just, we really need a sidewalk down the, the one side all the way, but we would have to get permission from the, I think, I don't know if we'd have to get permission from the homeowner there, which actually I think is the side where the tennis courts are, just to continue that sidewalk all the way up. It wouldn't, no, but it would just, it'd be one more thing that we could add along there too, just so that they're not coming. Is, I don't know. I think that, I think that homeowner you think so? Okay. Well, that might be something we approach here before. Uh, that's something we can't. Um, we can't. I mean, we can petition MoDOT, but we can't. Um, we can't make that decision on that part. Part of that. Um, how far we can go there? Okay. That's true. We had a motion. We had a motion. So uh, she motioned. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, perfect. Does anybody want to see the work that we're doing? Well, it's like a book. Yeah. And I just glanced through it the other day. Yeah. 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 You've already done the work, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm
I like to read it. And like if, if you look at a copy of the one that's not highlighted, it's it just hard. looks blurred. Yeah. But if you highlight it, stand up. Okay. Great. So now we have a resolution. Oh, you did that one. We have reading the bill number 544 of conflict of interest. Oh, that was Colin Dyer. Was this just updating it for every two years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I was going to say, no, we have states and Missouri law that we do. Really you know, but that you know, financial disclosure. Okay. So we're renewing. Okay. We do have to do it every even year. Oh. Motion for the first reading bill 544 by Kyle Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any changes to it from previous years? No, just the date. One more one word was corrected. Personnel. Oh, personnel. It's just gotta have a new signature and a new date on it. Yeah. They wanted it to be grammatically different. Yes. <laughs> or correct, depending on which did, but I didn't read that close. Yeah. Um, bill number five forty four and an ordinance to the city of Forsyth, Missouri to establish a procedure to disclose potential conflicts of interest and substantial interest for certain officials. Motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. First reading of bill number 545, reapportioning the aldermanic boards. And we discussed this last month if um, you weren't here. It is we, we need to even out the wards since the uh, new census came in. And they have to be within a certain percentage of each other. Um, and so we had to even them out a little bit. I move the reading of bill number 545. Oh, five, five. Okay, bill number five. Oh, sorry. Second. Yes, we need to. Oh, you really? <laughs> I am trying to hurry it along, aren't I? <laughs> I'm telling you, I, it's been a long week for me. I'm tired. Okay, uh, do we have a second? I'll second it. All in you favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, bill number 545, ordinance amending section 100.040 of the municipal code reapportioning the aldermanic uh, wards. Approval of bill number 545. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Discuss draft budget. Okay, Angela. Well, you've all got a draft budget in your packets. Uh, the first sheet shows the impact of what we've put in the budget on your cash balances, starting with what we expect, expect to begin with and how they will end the uh, net change on general fund right now is about $257,000 reducing our cash balances in that position by that amount. The utility fund is approximately going to use $70,000 in reserves. We are going to have to find a way to make that a little closer, I think, to a, to a balanced, less reserve money in that budget. One of the things that came out of the budget hearing was we didn't have a lot of time to talk about everyone else's budget besides police department. So uh, I'm looking for suggestions on how you want to handle the next step of balancing this up. And then the other side is we have not determined what the employees department splits will be. And we have uh, two in particular that we need to probably change. The building inspector is spending about 25% of his time on fire issues. We expected that to be closer to 50. Mm -hmm. But if you want to change his split, we need to do that. And also, uh, Steve, in his current position, is covering a lot more departments. And he is split between 98% sewer and 2% water. So that probably should change as well. Right. But to determine what that number is to come up with final payroll distributions. Okay. So we need a lot more spending local is what you're saying. <coughs> yeah. 
Um, we could probably sustain this for 18 months, maybe two years with our reserves, but then you're going to be out of reserves. Okay. And the just glancing at the sales tax numbers, our numbers are not up. We have, we show 8% over last year, but if you remember what the inflation numbers are, that's just price inflation. That's not new sales tax, right. I believe. So uh, 15 to 20% is what I would expect we would need to increase our sales tax over the next three consecutive years for sure to be back to where we can be uh, flush. Not per year. Yes, 15% each year. So we need some new businesses to come to town and stay. That's kind of what we're That's hoping for with some of the Jellystone and <coughs> the expanse of it, they will spend money here. The other option is there are some companies out there that will help you find lost revenues. Uh, for example, the franchise tax around me, um, cable and electric. Uh, they will go in and do an audit to see if the city is receiving everything they're supposed to be receiving. And you don't pay for that up front. You pay for that out of what they find. So they're over, encouraged to find. Of course they're encouraged to find. And um, 35 to 50%, I think, is their fee range, depending on how much they find. It's pretty standard. It's, uh, because the schools do that a lot. But, uh, you're not getting all the federal money you should be getting, you mm -hmm. can claim care and stuff like that. So, so it's, it's an option you can think about. We don't have to do that immediately. And I would want to have proposals from more than like, one company that's been how calling. Do you <laughs> so let's say they find nothing. We don't pay them anything. Then. So risk on that. Uh, like to lower risk, no losses. The, yeah. the only risk you run because of the way things are in the world, uh, the Forsyth Post Office serves a very large area. Sometimes utility companies can say, oh, well, it's a Forsyth mailing address, therefore it belongs to the city of Forsyth. If they find some that should not be in the city, they will identify those as well, and you could uh, potentially lose a little bit there as well. But um, it's, uh, but it's, it's an option. So it's not in their best interest to have you lose. I wouldn't think so. No, but I think too. I'm wondering too with some of the annexation if we're actually getting with the ones that we've had in the past if we're actually getting everything we should be getting. Generally, yes, because when you do the annexations, you notify the county in four different offices, and then you send it to Department of Revenue, who changes the boundaries of the taxing district. Okay. And then, uh, used to, they notified any merchants in the district. A couple of years ago, that law changed, and now we would have to notify them, those people. But uh, we haven't done an annexation in quite a while. But those, those are definitely falling within the, the Department of Revenue's taxing boundaries okay. right now. Okay. And then one other thing to maybe look at here in the next year or so is possibly doing the sale, uh, asking voters for the sales tax of online purchases that we're missing out on. The use tax. The use tax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do we have an estimate again on how much it is that we're missing out on? It'd be, if it, if my husband would tell you from our house alone, it's a lot. So, <laughs> so shop local. <laughs> well, they, they estimated, that Ziegenfuss said they estimated Hollister's at like 13 grand a month. They actually found out it was 40 grand a month. So, so we, we get to the quarter. Exactly, you know, even if it was 13 grand a month that they're missing out on, that's still a good number. They're actually missing out on, they were, Actually, are, it increased 40 grand is what they found out they were actually missing out on. That's a little, I would say during COVID, a lot of people changed their purchasing mm -hmm. practices. They online. did. It changed a lot. And it's hard to change back. Sure. Or you find a company in that. So I think there's probably a lot of lost things there. Well, I think it's a lot of the, the online, it's the convenience thing because, you know, like you go into a store, if you need like an air filter for your house, you go to the store, they don't have it. Now you wasted your time going there, and you could just, you know, buy now, and it comes to your house for free. You know, and I think you said people change there. I think they changed in 2019, 2020, and 
and that convenience factor now is just a part of how we live. It yeah. is how we live. So. And, and I have things like um, my dogs have to have specific dog food because they have weak stomachs. So you can't get that hardly anywhere, but I can get it online. And so that's what I, I have a subscription, you know, and it comes every month. And so, um, but I got to where it was convenient and I didn't have to go get the stuff, so I have lots of subscriptions, you know, so anyway. I talked to the UPS man that delivered us in Forsyth, Jim, and he has given up Forsyth for Cedar Creek Pokemon area because he was making 500 drops a day in yeah. Forsyth and he couldn't do it. 500 stops a day and the back end of those UPS trucks run about 150 degrees all the time. And there's no air in them, so. No. My dog <laughs> yeah, it's, so I know it, but that gets a little bit off, but that's, that's one of the things we might look at because that would definitely. Last time we tried that was when? It was before the COVID, I think, yeah. I think people's attitude on it may have changed. Does that have to go to a vote? Yeah. yeah. So it takes a lot of education. Yes. It would, and we need the time to do it. And, you know, it isn't just something that you would want to throw out there. And, and you want to actually spend the time to educate. And, and um, the power is for the town that it could bring in. Right. Yeah. Well, I think you want to get your town businesses behind it too yeah. because I mean if you look at it from their perspective it puts them a little bit more on an equal playing field. It does. In cost in that well I get taxed if I go to country more locally but I'm not getting taxed if I go to internet more. Exactly. And so those businesses might be a good avenue to help educate because it's mm -hmm. putting them on a playing field. Right. Ooh. Yeah. <clears throat> So, anyway, that's something I would like to, you know, pursue here soon, you know, sometime soon in the next. And would that company that does the analysis, would they be, is, are they the ones that would give us an estimate of what we're missing out on on that? Or I guess I did, never on asked. Tax? Yes. Department of Revenue has a calculator on their website. <coughs> I haven't looked at it lately okay. uh, to estimate that. Okay. So I'll, I will do that. I was like, I don't know how Hollister got their 13, but it actually was 40. Yeah. You know, so it's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So anyway, if we can't get people to shop local, which we've been you know, working on right for some time, right? Um, I think we have a choice. Well, they did shop local during the big hard COVID, so yeah. you know, our income was up. Tax where all the other cities were down. But I would expect that to maybe reflect and return back to the way it was before people went over to Walmart right now. Right. Mm -hmm. I buy my washer and dryer, my bedding, my um, couches and stuff, all from Forsyth Furniture. So I try to shop as much local as I possibly can. <coughs> as long as it's here. So on the payrolls. Um, Steve, what do you suppose your the time amount percentage you're spending? Probably 75% of my time is the waste for the plant. Okay. So we need to move the 25% to? Probably. Probably some to streets and more to water. And some to the park. Okay. Some to the park. Okay. And then on will like uh, seventy five percent in one and twenty five percent in the other then? Um, the hope is that if we spend more time with the fire department. Yeah. So maybe, maybe. thirty seventy for this year. Thirty percent fire department and seventy percent inspection. We're hoping that it'll be closer to fifty fifty. Okay. All right. Did we know when the last time we raised the price of permits? Uh, you know, it's the girls. Long time. Uh, 25. Because I think that we are a lot lower 
I think we're right on the Collister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you're right. We are. The Collister. We may be less than Branson, but that's not too surprising. Now, yeah, Collister's a good. It, it's more of a comparison, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's on on their website. I think it says 40 blocks right on there for a permit. Charlie was in this 250 in that way. It what? probably is. Oh my goodness. And it's, uh, they have lifted, as has Miriam Woods, they have reduced their inspection requirements and their permitting requirements in the hopes that it'll generate more new construction, which kind of defeats the purpose of building code. But. Well, if you look, if you have a, a builder that's got a million dollar insurance policy, they're going to build it to code anyway. So, if you have that, yes. If, 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 you were, if we were to require the builders carry a million dollar policy, then it's all on the builder insurance. If they didn't build it to code, the builder would be liable. Because usually, because <laughs> typically where I've done construction in the past is you have a one year warranty on a house. It's not just a taillight warranty. It's a one year everything warranty. So when some of the new codes came out, you know, you'd go back to a house half a dozen times because nobody could unplug a vacuum cleaner. And it would trip their breakers all the time. Yeah. So when they put those new ones in, so you had to go back there and educate them. But then it was like once their year ran out, it's 500 bucks a time to have me come back here and reset your breaker. So. I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with how that insurance process would work to our advantage. Well, and I, and I think if we're not careful, the IS, ISO that Nathan's working on now, that number could change if we didn't have the building permits and inspections that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, a, that's a component of the rating. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I can tell you, like, I go down to the gym in Rockaway, and they're building down there. They're really changing up yeah. that whole lower area is really changing. Fast. Very, very fast. And you know what? You, the guys are, you can look at somebody that does the trades and you can tell that they're doing a very good job by how they handle things. You know, there's not just, it's not just hack and slash. It's, there's some good looking stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I don't really want to go any less on the, the salaries. Oops, sorry. The salaries we discussed, um, before you're already paying those, so huh? you're already paying those because that's right. what you approved. Right, right. I didn't. I, didn't go as as, I, I know that, but I just I'm not saying as far as I know that we have a little bit of a, um, you know, it's looking like you know there's going to be going to reserves a little bit, but I don't want to do anything less than what we did because we need to be a little bit, we need to be competitive. We were we not do. competitive. We were, we were not. people every 90 days to somebody else paying two dollars an hour more. Right. Our starting salary wasn't enough uh, and our increases. So our good. goal is to figure out how we're going to bring more, a little bit more money in and I'm hoping with the businesses that are coming in and stuff that we, that will help and, and, um, and we'll keep working from there to bring more we want more business in so Dennis Nathan's not here tonight due to his other commitment right was there going to be a change to the fire budget that you guys had talked about um yeah we're going to be adjusting the the number that you had in grade for that okay um yeah we'll get with you on that um he figured that number at high he figured out 15 people responded to every single call and stuff like that. So it's really, really high. Um, so we're going to be able to lower that. Okay. Um, but we also need people <coughs> responding to calls. And I think by increasing the way the pay they get, not way, the pay they get, hopefully that helps us keep the volunteers and them respond on medical calls. Sure. Because Nathan does respond on most of everything. And he's paid, so that's not for that. Um, oh, and we so, need the volunteers to take yeah. some of the load off camp. That's right. That's right. So, that would be nice. So hopefully by increasing that, we can do that. And that'll come out of fire tax, and I know that that's pushing the fire tax to the limit, right? Uh, yes. It's committed more than we will take in next year. Right. Right. So uh, we typically transfer half of what comes in into the capital account. 
so what we've got here, depending on how far we go down, is about 120,000, and half of the fire tax is about 48. So that's a pretty big chunk out of the reserves. So we may need to, to whittle a little more. I don't know. Nathan, I'll get with you between now and then. Now, when we present it, present it. On the 15th of August. On the 15th of August. <laughs> Sounds like tax day. Ooh, worse than that. Yeah. Worse than that. Here, 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 Angela, can you repeat part of that for me? You said you typically transfer what to capital? 50% of the fire tax goes into the fire department capital savings account. Oh, OK. So that we can have the money to buy some big part So that we can purchase. write the check we wrote today for yeah, the new fire the truck. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which, if we had that fire truck, it would be responding to the very public avalanche. There's a fire down, a uh, grass fire down, taking all area uh, to a farm. And it is, it's really scary, folks, right now with uh, things as dry as they are. I know I don't have to tell you all, but um, places are burning quickly because of all of it. And, um, you know, there's an entire apartment complex in Springfield last night and then at Dutton's yesterday. And so it's just, and then there's grass fires all the time. So uh, it's, it's scary right now. So we need as much as we can to, everybody to kick in as much as we can to prevent, so. Okay. Should it shoot? Do you want us to yeah. this budget? <laughs> There you go. No. Okay. It's, I say it's draft. We need to yeah. fist, fist it up and then in August we'll okay. approve it and also amend the existing budget. Okay. And then we'll be there. All right. Perfect. All right. Board of Adjustments. Reappoint Ron Perry. Okay. And this motion will be second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 How'd it go, guys? You all right? Yes, ma'am. You look ma awfully hot. Yeah. All right. Discuss the fish. Fence issue Justin. at 151. Just huh? Well, just in time. Yeah. <laughs> just in time. Well, you're up. At 151 Pine Street. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Hubble uh, made the claim and submitted, uh, or had an engineer that went out that the city street of uh, Lincoln is uh, two feet onto his property and would want once put a fence six inches from the edge of his property um, which would have put it into the road. <laughs> have it in the road. <laughs> Correct. Um, so uh, we I got with their engineer I apologize my brain is not fully functioning right now. Oh I know believe me. Uh, I got with their engineer they did send me a plan that I voted on uh, that is neither signed nor stamped, which does not make it official, but they claim it is also there in the street. Uh, we do have an ordinance that gives the city right away from the center of line, uh, 50, uh, yeah, 50 feet uh, in the design guide. I believe I've already copy on to that to you. Yeah. Um, which gives us leeway on that, as well as there is a water line that's there. Um, I have not been able to read the copy that I got of the easement thoroughly enough to be able to plot it on a map as to where exactly that is. Okay. Um, being such an old copy. Anyhow, uh, there is an easement that is somewhere on his property that runs through it that gives us uh, 20 feet from the center line of what I believe is the water line that cuts in that water as well. Okay. So, and he's, you know, we can't have the fence in the road. Yes. So, and can't be interfering with water lines, obviously. 
and um, so we're going to have to figure out some <coughs> feet away from those things. Any suggestions? This said, when I've spoke to Steve in the past, I think we agreed 15 feet center line okay. was appropriate for them to be able to easily get in to dig uh, any trench out for water or sewer um, without risk of touching any building or anything right. like that the spoil. And we tear up <coughs> something to get to it. Yeah. Yes, no. Right. So when did you purchase the house? Uh, I've not been able to find an exact date. There's four different dates that I found, both on tax roll or waterline. I apologize, I don't remember what they are offhand. So is it safe to say he did not purchase it in 1940? Correct. Okay. Yeah, so the street was already there. So, he, so technically, yeah. he didn't have it inspected prior to purchasing the house. Didn't have, didn't have it surveyed. Didn't have. I mean, do we have? I mean, we have a prescriptive easement on what we've been using. Correct. From the edge of the road and a reasonable shoulder. Mm -hmm. No matter what the survey say, no matter how long he's owned it. Well, I agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 Just the way things But I'm like, yeah. so we want to, being good neighbors, we we'll want to take as little as possible, but we have but. to have the roadway and reasonable space to operate. So, well, if we do 15 foot from the center line of the water line? That I think is appropriate. Would you agree with me on that for any public works access? Mm -hmm. uh, so, given permission to do a fence 15 foot from the center of the water line? I think that would be appropriate and get him the most without putting us in a corner that we could potentially damage property in the future should we have to ever do a, a fix or repair or. Uh, upgrade water lines in the future, perhaps. Yeah, and I'd imagine some of those water lines in that area are cast iron. Yeah. Well, um, oh. different cities have different restrictions on building over a utility easement. Uh, as long as the person understands that, if necessary, we'll take down the fence to do repairs. But have to put it up in there. And with the width of Lincoln and Pine, for that matter. They're very narrow. They're extremely narrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not two car streets. No. No. No, no they're about no. vehicle and order. Right. So but, you're saying, <laughs> <for emergency>. <laughs> <laughs> but you're saying the survey. He, uh, the plat uh, that they gave us, I, I hesitate to call it a survey. The drawing. The drawing because it is not stamped the by an engineer. That, where did it come from? Did it, it come came from an engineering firm. I don't remember their name. Well, have we seen the plat from the courthouse? Uh, I could not find a plaque from the courthouse. I did go up there and look. Um, I apologize. If you like, I think we, we may need to consult. Probably need to consult a title company and have it provide okay. us with a plaque. Because I mean, we already have an ordinance for public sewers that says, and I, I completely take it off of the end what it says here. But no authorized person shall uncover, make any connections with, or opening into, <coughs> use, alter, or disturb any public sewer or. Uh, Pertinence, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. um, thereof without first obtaining a written permit from the superintendent. I mean, if you wanted to say, no, you can't put it there, I mean, it says right here, but I think we could all say, no, you cannot put a fence on top of a city sewer. No. I mean, it's just, I mean no. say we're going to invoke common sense here and just say you can't put it there. What makes him think he owns that, that he didn't get a survey when he bought it? it, it was he, uh, <coughs> the reason I hesitate to call it a survey is a survey has an engineer stamp right, right. on it and it is signed by the, the engineer that approved it. Uh, the picture that I got from the engineering firm, like I said, it has neither of those two things, so it is not officially a survey. Okay, was that a recent or is that that was recent? That was yeah, it was recent. He had done, but he is correct. I've seen it. It does not have any of those. So it's not official. It's I mean, not no, official. There's no lat longs no. on there. I mean, you can't go out and find the pins of his property. So, so, they, so they, they do have to go back to him and tell him that we need an official survey and that he needs <coughs> to go dig up the title work and come back. But to even us. then, but we, we, even we don't way. even have even to. Then, yeah, the, we have the property line yields the to our prescriptive easement. 
Yeah. It, it is of my opinion that the water line that is on his side of that property line, anyhow, uh, would it trump even any sort of survey that may say that it's right. his right. property? Right, it is. It isn't and gonna, you know. My prescription is that he cannot build the fence 15 feet from the center line of that, but I don't want to overstep my authority as a building inspector and wanted to make sure that his opinion was properly heard sure. before the elected elected uh, officials. Sure. And and but I do believe that we need to stay within the easement guidelines that we have for that and I think fifteen feet is fair. Because it is there a public easement there? Well that's I, I did find uh, uh a document if you like i'll go get it real quick out of my office because there's another it part is of it very difficult to read to be able to put the wording onto a plan to draw a straight line to understand where it's going this is a 1940 document well no it was 1980 but i don't know whether it was a problem with the scanning or maybe they had a uh, bad printer at the time um, there's a, plethora of reasons why it's right. yeah so this one i mean here's another part of it, another ordinance that we have it says a sanitary sewer other than building sewer within or without a public easement so if it doesn't have a public easement or right of way and in which all owners of abutting properties have equal rights and which is controlled by the city so if the city controls it technically all the other owners have equal rights to whatever his claim is and they could say no we don't want it there so it's confusing in that the term easement is used both for Grants, yes, mm -hmm. that are written. Yeah, it is uh -huh. confusing and that way. I know. Use. Yes, right. Which is the exact opposite. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yep, I agree. But I think until For he gets most of our county roads have never <coughs> been dedicated at all, and there is no description of them. They're not surveyed the way the state highway department surveys their rights away, mm -hmm. uh, it, and roads meander because if this engineering company went out there and surveyed his property they had to find an original title thing uh, that I do not know they would not state that they did or did not find one so once again what I got I let you see uh, that's pretty much all I got I think I forwarded you the direct email yeah, itself you did. from them yeah uh, yeah. When I spoke to him on the phone, I asked for any information they had pertaining to this, and that's what I got. Okay. What I would say as a realtor to that, because I've dealt with some of these decent problems and issues, is to go back on what the title company found. Because if there's something in the history of this that's come up, it may have to be grandfathered in. Well, we've got what we've been using. Well, when there is a water main break, there's no time to tear down a fence. It's just, that's just it. There would be no tear down, it'd just be like, remove it. Yeah, and so there's no time for that. So we can't, we need to keep that, you know, 15 feet from that center and stick with that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Discuss Shadow Rock Lodge debris disposal options. Okay, here's another thing I'm not sure if everybody's aware of, but if you don't cheer, you haven't been here very long. <laughs> okay, so everybody knows the building sitting down there going up to Skyline and down to the Shadow Rock that has barbed wire around it. It's coming down. Um, the new the owners, um, they're wanting to find, it. they wanted us to help a little bit with the cost of demoing it. They're going to remove all of the, as, have all the asbestos removed out and so that it's safe. But then the, the um, they wanted to help us, us to help a little bit with the cost of it. And, you know, you can see our current budget. It really, we just don't have that for it. But to help them, it would save them about 30% of the cost um, if we allowed them to a uh, place to dump their fill, you know. And so 
Well, there's a couple places we have. Um, so we need to discuss where that would be with that, that block would go to that they're going to tear down. And there's a, well, there's a place or two that we've been trying to build up, but anyway, and that would help. And um, so anyway, we just need to discuss that. But I wanted to give you guys all the background on that so you knew what was happening. Build up the park and then it won't flood us. Through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the park will not let us put it down in the park. They won't. <laughs> <laughs> what what they didn't decide to do this? It sounded like a win-win. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Nate can tell you more on that. What's that? He's been filling me. Why, why all of a sudden is a guy from Canada and the guy from the U.S. decided to tear that down? Well, the people that are interested are, and they brought investors and they've got an investor here out of Kansas City and we met with their engineer contractors and architects. Um, so it hasn't officially been purchased, but it has moved forward a lot and they're very interested. And so, um, that was part of the plan was to tear that down. They were looking at um, putting in, like, I call them similar to apartments, but um, kind of townhouses, kind of that setting upstairs, and then do complete infill downstairs. And so, obviously, they got they got a lot of investors into it to be able to do it. But um, the biggest cost is it, it is that building, you know that. So I think the one, and I haven't seen it officially, but they said roughly around 130, 140,000 just to bring that building down. And so that's what prompted this conversation. It's like, well, did the city put anything into it? I'm like, it's over my head, but we can figure out a plan and, and see. But um, so whether it's this investor or a future investor, I mean, it, that could be an option for them. I mean, it'd be a good fill once it's remediated with from the lead asbestos. So that's being taken care of. and you run this by uh, hmm. DNR. So yeah, so uh, all the asbestos and lead has to go through uh, certified remediators regardless. Right, but even so after that. Correct. We yeah, there's a, there's a DNR. Yeah, there's a landfill disturbance and all that stuff that you have to follow and they'll follow that with part of the uh, demo uh, process through the building department and stuff. So, um, but because there's a limit of how much rebar they could have and things like that, but the contractors um, that had called, and that's who was prompted and had suggested, hey, it would save us a heck of a lot, you know, for the owner who had a place local to be able to put the fill in. But I mean, they can, and some of them say they can break it down to fairly small chunks. They have machines that can break it down. So that's kind of prompted where it is. I don't know how many tons you're looking at, but it's probably a lot. Oh, I'd imagine it's a lot. That's a big building. Yeah, yeah that, that's a win-win for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And surely we can find some place to put. You won't find. You won't have a hard time getting <coughs> that. Though. Probably needs yeah. to be some place that doesn't drain. Truck loads right, right now. for <laughs> work. Trust me, put a sign on it. Let me drop um, a contract so real quick. <laughs> if it was a, you know, but that's up to, you know, obviously the contractor and, right. and the owner, but uh, we, we, we had to give them options that as, as plan B, if for some reason um, no one else would take it, then we've got an option local to be able to put it and, you know, um, so. And granted, it isn't a done deal yet, but we, oh, and we are all in hopes that that thing comes down. It has been an eyesore for very long yeah. time, way before I got here, so. And it shows outsiders' interest in foresight. Yeah. And can you imagine what, I mean, townhouses or something like that down right there coming, uh, that would look very, very nice. And so. They could have lakefront right here. The they would have lakefront. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes closer than others. <laughs> so. so, but it does, it looks very promising from them the last time we talked to them. And, um, both Will and I had met with, you know, with, like I said, the architect and the engineer, and so they can kind of come up with a plan with the with the owner and the investors and stuff. So that's kind of where it sits. So the two places we have to dispose is the back of the fairgrounds, the Taney County Fair Board overseas. Where Correct. Already dumped a lot of stuff, and then our back of the city shop. Back of the city shop. We probably take it some more work to be able to do that and there needs to be some pushing done as Steve said so you know I mean, so them, them are the only two locations 
is that I would recommend at this point there may be other causes. Right. That well, and and if then we have people to, yeah. we are not going to deny that. If they've got a legitimate place to, yeah. um, I think we ought to allow. It's no different than what we pulled up off of the city streets and we put and you right. know people wanted and we've given to them for free. So yeah. And anything that we can do to help that thing go come down, uh, we're going to try. So, anyway. Great news. Thank you. Very good news. Yeah. All right. <coughs> and discuss Shuttle Rock Lodge demo permit. I move that we waive the demo permit. Yes, sir. To uh, allow them to demolish that building. I would say yeah. the feet, the feet, the feet. I would like to request with the number of buildings that we have in the city that do need to be coming down. That is a uh, from the city that we make the blanket policy a first time issue demo permit mm -hmm. for any dangerous building be free of charge. Um, that way we can at least show a good sign of faith to help people tear down the city. Uh, more dangerous buildings. I mean, it's not generally a large cost, but I think it's a good act on behalf of the city towards people to help them out just a little bit. What do we see generally in a year's time of uh, demo permits? Until uh, recently, we've not tracked demo permits. Okay. Singularly, we've I would put them under commercial or residential remodel with okay. no demo. Chief and I reopened up a separate category for the demo permits. What's our, what's our that? demo pyramid cost? Uh, it would be the, without uh, any variation to it, it would be the same as any other, which is the first $10,000, $845 fee, $4.25 per thousand. It's not a lot. The city's not making much. But like I said, it's a friendly act, in my opinion. To I think that's a great idea. And we get rid of some of the shambles that the dangerous got. stuff yeah. yes and so it definitely would be beneficial if we didn't have it exist and to give them a break yeah i was going to say chief and i believe we're 15 we're tracking in the city uh that either need major renovations or complete ventilation we have three days to be. So my motion was on, on just the <laughs> rock, but I'll make the motion that we waive um, for first time. First time. We and they're the dangerous. Dangerous building. We still need an application and inspection and such things. Which yes, sir. Feet. Right yeah. For a, for a one time. <coughs> so if there's somebody that owns like 17 sure. buildings. It, 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 in my Probably opinion, it should be one address, one time for it, as a good faith. If they don't get it done in the six months, no extension on that one, they would have to apply for a new permit, full price. Okay. Is there a provision for shared walls? <laughs> I know where you're going with you that. You got to talk to Ponytail about that. The last time we addressed that issue, and I think it was the same building, we were going to require yes. a bond mm -hmm. to before, yes. before the demolition occurred so that it wouldn't damage the adjacent building. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the consensus of both adjoining property owners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it yeah. didn't go anywhere after that. Yeah. I found out some worse today worse. that that building is in contract and it's being sold. What? That building is. Yes. Wow. Wonderful. It's a heck of an inspection. Wow. Hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dangerous building discussion. Did I just do that? I just did. Boy, I need a nap, obviously. So, Discuss uh, ordinance review no, process. Yeah. We didn't do is that. No, we just what I was asking. Dangerous 13. building discussion. Well, it's kind of in there. Yeah. It was. It, yeah. But you know, if anybody wants to see a list, 
you have a list of the dangerous buildings. Yeah, I've got the list down in my office. There's, there's a, and again, these aren't engineered. This is based on driving around, looking at it, professional opinion as far as looking at the property. Um, Will, is, Will and I drove around and he's got a list that has a checklist on it. And there's about 15 properties um, that meets that description of dangerous buildings. Some of them have been written notices before, nothing's done, move forward. Um, some may have never ever been notified. Um, so to be able to move forward on it, we need some guidance there. Cause oh, I see of, what you're saying. You know, um, I, I really do believe that we need to press forward as far as um, notification of these, and we need to make some, we need to make some progress as far as um, penalty if there's you know nothing done. And um, but I don't know what your feeling is, but we really don't need these to exist in the city limits if they're dangerous. Well, it says so, all, all dangerous buildings if you don't. If the property owner just refuses or you have that frequent flyer, we can deem them a nuisance. And the max fine for the nuisance is 500 bucks. And then if we decide to move forward and just either tear it down or mediate it, it says we can take and put that on their tax bill. Yeah. Uh, collecting it. Well, but, but it's on their tax bill. And um, I don't know where we would go from there, but at least it would not be an eyesore anymore. Because, I mean, like you said, there's three of them down there. I mean, I was a 13-year-old one time. It wasn't trespassing. It was exploring. Right. And the city knows about them. So we, we, right. we can't claim plausible deniability right. if a 13-year-old goes in there and gets hurt. You know, we are right. semi at fault. In the fall, we'll have the squatters back. I mean, there's, there's yeah, some time period. Yeah, they come back. Yeah. I, you know, bless the police department's heart. They get a call usually from my neighbor at some point saying, hey, we've got like people live in there, you know, and it's, it's just what it is. So yeah, I think some of the, you can skirt some of that dangerous building ordinance by not bringing in a professional engineer. Because some of it says, yeah, to demo, you gotta have a professional engineer, but to deem it a dangerous building, it says those which are so dilapidated, decayed, unsafe, unsanitary, or which so utterly fail to provide the amenities essential to decent living, and they are unfit for human habitation. You don't need to be a professional engineer to make that determination. If I may, I have a copy for all of you of the checklist that I have. This is the checklist that we went around for the piece of the property. Ordinance, mm -hmm. Except for 2A, 2B, which I took that okay. section and divided it into two for uh, ease of being able to document mm -hmm. Uh, it's a front and back, uh, but that's the list that I've been using when going around with Chief with the... Uh, that helps. Believe me, it's just not our opinion. This is this is what the ordinance says. This is this very is good to have a checklist. And it, yeah, it, they can't say that it's just your opinion that it's, it's in bad shape. You've checked off the list that <coughs> it's in bad shape. Yes, ma'am. So... Um, Chief Force, do you have any issue if, I mean, so if we write them just like a regular nuisance violation, they try to contact them um, and work with them that way. If they, if there's no response, we send them a letter. We used to do a certified letter, folks, so that's like 12 or 15 bucks now just to send a certified. It really doesn't mean anything because some of them come back still. Mm -hmm. So, and it doesn't say, it just says you have to notify them. It doesn't say, you know, moving forward, but we do keep a copy, and the force gets a copy of that and try to see who, uh, who needs to be involved, but uh, as far as, instead of going down the, you know, towards the other part of that dangerous building ordinance, are you able to ticket them based off of that? Yeah, just call it several of them for it. Sometimes that gains compliance. Um, but we still be able to answer someone besides just us as well. <coughs> You guys, if that's the correction you want to handle. I, yes. I mean, to to clean up and address some of the you know concerns, you have to. You know, you're going to have to send out that $500 fine, you know, which is the max allowed by I think the nuisances here. Yes, correct. <coughs> uh, the fine is at that. the discretion of the judge after a finding or plea of guilty. So, if the judge doesn't feel that $500 is warranted, he probably will not 
going to be $500. So we'll have to look and see where he falls under the Ferguson yes. aftermath. The so, but, that, it, but if you take good pictures and, you know, <laughs> right. prove all your time that you sent it out there, you know, like, hey, this, is, this has been like this. We've contacted him for years. We now finally have the okay to move forward. I hope we would have a judge that would see that, you know, and not say, well, let's give him some more time because, I mean, I was a 13-year-old once. Right. Yeah, no, I, there's definitely some potential of being uh, dangerous to the public, for sure. Mm -hmm. And if it were a situation where we did whatever and, and put on the tax bill, at what point can those things be turned over for a tax sale? Well, if, if they are properly <coughs> added to the tax bill, uh, to the county collector, then just like any collector tax, after three years of delinquency. So ba and basically, somebody if we if we demolished it, it basically be a, a vacant lot, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And then we could go with the tax sale. Okay. I think the three I'm talking about were originally purchased on the tax sale. That's how the mm -hmm. current mm -hmm. entity that owns them. Yeah, some, some of them are owned by LLC. It's an LLC. Yep. I was trying to be blind. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, it, I mean, an LLC does matter as to how things progress from there, in my understanding. And I'm not really disgruntled. I mow one of them, two of them sometimes, just so that it keeps the snakes out of my yard. Yeah, he was just sent it over to another neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> if there's some citizen involvement in this of filing complaints of these homes that are falling down that are dangerous oh i you know i mean david you would say some of the complaints we get on the community page are oh, yeah. yeah but i mean to actually file a, a official complaint is there a way to do that and bring it to the city and because there's a couple back behind us there's one that's full of cats there's no people there but the cats are thick you can always do that. City Hall has a form that you yeah. can just fill out. You can always do that. We go investigate it. I mean, obviously, I mean, we want to trust everybody. We still go out and look, do okay. a visual, make phone calls, give courtesy calls to see it. is it legit because we do get complaints because they don't like each other, neighbors, so we'll okay. deal with that. But. but like, you know, like the weeds that you're mowing, because I mean, if you got cited for weeds, would it, I mean, it says right here, so we would not be out of line if you cited them. For offensive vegetation if the public nuisance is not abated within 10 days after notice of violation is first given the city clerk or city inspector may cause such public nuisance to be abated by reasonable means whether that means we would contract it out and have a lawn care service go over there and mow it and then we'd give them the bill and then it'd be on them or i mean if the public works guys did it and then we would still we'd still charge the the property owner for you it. You can charge them if you never collect it. Yeah. So yeah. we need to... to but that, but <laughs> that's, a tax that, that's a tax that they have to pay. Yeah. And then pretty soon it goes up for tax auction. They no longer have the property. And hopefully somebody else is encouraged to come in and maintain the property. But, I mean, because 10 days, we legitimately could be parked there morning, day 11, 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and just say, hey, get out and get this done knock it out and then bill them or just have a you know get three bids from the lawn care service send it out with the nuisance abatement thing say hey here's three people that'll come mow your yard if they don't do anything call one of them and say hey whoever can do it on day 11 be over there send us pictures and let's get it cleaned up we need to have a stair step though of a, a fine correct and so where do you want to start My history is most of our nuisance abatements are 50 bucks. That's a, that's a fine that I've seen because <coughs> I've had not people not show up for court and they get a $50 cash only fine. Now, I'll take this and they get a $50 cash only fine. I arrest them on their warrant on a nuisance violation. It costs us $45 for a board bill to put them in jail so they can pay the $50 fine so they can get out. So we're spinning our wheels on some of this. Mm -hmm. So we need to direct our time wisely and where we're going to go with it and how we're going to do it. 
Because I can go write people tickets all day long throughout town for everything. But, you know, it's how are we going to step forward? Because tickets sometimes gain compliance because they, they see that they're in trouble, they get it cleaned up, and then they go in there and, correct me if I'm wrong, the judge looks at it and goes, you cleaned your yard up, everything's good, let's just squash this. It's so, not me, just to clarify. I'm yeah. not a <laughs> <laughs> No finger pointing. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, you take the Nintendo away from the kids so they clean their room. Right. I mean, that's how we're, that's how we're doing it. We're telling them, here, you're going to have to pay us until you get your yard cleaned up. So is it going to be, we need to come together as a city and work on it? Because I'm not going to go to an 80-year-old widow and write her a ticket for her grass being too tall because she can't get out there and mow her yard. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not as worried right now about the grass as I am the dangerous buildings. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That, that's my focus. Mm -hmm. And I think that needs to, we need to start at a little bit of a substantial, you know, they know they should have done something, and they haven't. What says the by a fine of not more than five hundred dollars. Well, well, I think well, maybe the stairs step back. Well, the stairs should change now. They used to be at two hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh, so I, first. I think we need so the stairs step it though. Oh, that, that's the state law. Huh? To yeah, but that's why our statutes. First, second, and third. Even if our statutes went up to the full five hundred permissible for ordinance violations, Ferguson changed that. Yeah. Okay. In most yeah. cases. So. You, you think $100 for the first fine? That's up to the courts. No, we can certainly yeah. recommend that. Okay, I mean, that's what I'm just recommending, <coughs> yeah. It is a starting point. Yeah. I think getting, a, get, especially the frequent flyers and the ones that's been notified, getting them in somewhere where they have to answer to someone just besides us. And it may keep be put presented to the court, but at least they got an answer and move forward. But how many times do you look at that, you go back to them, if there's no progress, obviously it's up to the judge at that point what they're going to deem, you know, what that fine is or and stuff. So, you know, we can see if, you know, if that makes progress on some of them. And, I mean, not going to get them all, you know, tomorrow, obviously, but at least we I know, start but we do need to make yeah. an effort to it's try hard. to get some I'm of sure. this <coughs> no, I definitely agree. While I agree on the earlier statement that some of our part of our ordinance is fairly clear cut on how it's wording about unsanitary so on and so forth, uh, and maybe this is more directed towards Bill, but my concern is the way the beginning of the ordinance is written is states the city engineer. And while I'm uh, I've got plenty of years of experience in construction. I'm not an engineer. Right. In that Why sense. Why don't you mark one up and get it to me? And I was going to say, I, I wonder if actually getting, maybe hiring a structural engineer for a day or two to go through these to actually declare them from a structural just, point of view. I think we can just start it with the inspector rather than okay. the city engineer. Okay. So, Get a copy of that. Mark the changes you'd yeah, like. Yeah, because a couple yeah. pages yeah. down it says duties of city city engineer. But before that, in the dangerous buildings defined, it's pretty clear. Um, so the basically, uh, building. If it's an unsafe building, anybody can look at a building and say, you know what, that's not safe. You know, now if you're going to talk about like you're fixing your building, there you need to call it an engineer. But like your buildings, to where you can walk in and you see, you can see through the floor. That's an unsafe building, you know. I don't think we need somebody with a PE after their name to declare his the three houses you're talking about unsafe. I think it comes to a point that if it goes through that where the city is going to demo it, then I think yeah, definitely an engineer at that point. It, it, if the city is going to demo it, yeah. it does say if the city is going to abate it, you have to have an engineer look at yeah, it. Right. Well, we won't. Yes. Well, hopefully, we can get a lot of those demos Correct. first yeah. before we get yeah. to that point. So, what I want from you is the ones that you've already given fines to. Okay. And how many fines that you've given. That's where we're gonna start. Okay, none of them has been fined. Okay, so, so no, if none have. On the list. There was, none on the list, this, okay. this year's list, have been, have been okay. fined. Well, could work. Go ahead. 
Huh? Yeah. Okay. I want I want to see the list, and then we need to start somewhere <laughs> that is in the worst. You need to Let's start with the worst. You need to have them ranked in the worst condition if you can. Okay. And we can start from there because um, it. You know, we're not doing our citizens any good if we're not trying to tell it out. Some of them are going to be like a eight-way tie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, we like we need to make some progress. Yeah, we're, it, we're it not, affects property values. It, it does. Affects the safety of kids. It affects a lot. I wouldn't want my kids yeah. next to some yeah, of those because I'd be afraid they'd wander in. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. and stuff just out of curiosity you know and stuff and even though no matter how many times you tell your kids not to do something they're going to do it and so um anyway i just don't want, I what, want about, at risk. what about condemnation well condemnation is kind of a corollary of what we're talking about and demolition to that you condemnation if you're going to condemn it, you need a city engineer to condemn yeah. it. Well, Unless we, it's a strict I think we need to do fire that. violation. I think we need to do that in the case of the party wall up there on Main Street, uh, on Fred Street. It's being purchased. I know it's being purchased. I'd like to stop the purchase. Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, force the guy to do something with it. Wait till my next one. Condemnation being published a circuit court lawsuit. It's not going to be quick. No. Well, that, that's a structure that's dangerous to two parties, one on each side of those party walls. Correct. That's been sitting there like that for three years. Four. Four years. And we know the guy that owns it's not going to fix it. And we also know, according to the contract, you did not disclose, honestly, all the conditions of the building. Do you know if the purchaser is expecting to remedy that? Uh, he is expecting to do a new roof on it. No, no, no. supporting the roof. No, the walls, We've that's the whole that problem. Down. The walls wouldn't support the current roof. So, no. the, yeah. well, the one ain't there anymore, so. And I'm in a position on that to be able to call his realtor mm -hmm. to be able to encourage that realtor or him to call the city and talk to you about it. So I would be more than happy to do that. I know the realtor very, very, very well. Wouldn't an inspection? He should, but I mean, <laughs> it's a cash buyer. They don't have a little more proactive. Okay, I do agree with Jack though right. about having buildings we have that classified like a cheat. as something because if these people buying the Shadowrock had not had. They were plans, the we would be in the day. same cycle yeah. as the last five buyers for that building. Mm -hmm. So, I do agree with that. Mark, we, need, we need to do something with that. I was just going to suggest figure out what we can do. I think when we get to talk about the disclosure, I think when they bought these time boxes, they didn't realize two of them probably had a bunch of their side on the I can get you a copy here when you get down. Because there's people that just go to the house. Okay. 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 So I think at least two of them probably have some aspects deciding and that's probably limited what they can do with it. But that would be my okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Probably my the the ones the rock asbestos was created to be non burnt correct. But <laughs> if that's even work. Yeah. <laughs> with enough diesel, you can burn rocks. Non flammable. <laughs> Yeah, off of uh, yeah. First Rock Hill. Um, yeah, Rock Hill. So this list obviously isn't conclusive as far as price. So this is what obvious what we could drive around because I got to look. We can't really. I mean, there's fine line when you can enter property and can't enter property. Um, so without going on the property, looking from the street view and stuff like that, um, I mean, you can look through windows, but. Other than that, you can't go inside the structure itself. So some of that, there may be other properties that may be just as bad on the inside. Inside, but the you outside can't tell. looks yeah. like a square box. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of one of them second phase things. You know, we're going to have to tackle that after we tackle some of the, you know, these numbers for sure. Right. Um, but I mean, this gives us a starting point, and. Yes. Um, 
that I'm sure some of these neighbors would be very thankful that we were doing something about it. Or well, trying to, at least. I've seen in other areas to where if a house is just so dilapidated, because the state of Washington has a, just a stupid rule that <laughs> seven years before you, it's not three years for tax auction, it's seven, seven. and houses just fall apart if nobody's in them. So one thing they offer up there is training for the fire department, and you just basically a controlled burn, burn it to the ground, and then scoop up the pieces. Yeah, unfortunately, we fall under DNR instead of Missouri, so we can't do it as training burns, but we do have to follow DNR regulations. This means they have to remove all the plastic shingles, has to have a lead and asbestos check. check. So it could be a possibility on some of the locations. We can look at that avenue, and there's some paperwork we have to do. Um, and then the close proximity to other properties we gotta look at too. Correct. I mean, if you got a neighbor right next door, yeah, it's probably not gonna be a good idea. No, but <laughs> some of them, some of them yeah, yeah. training. Yeah. Please, I, I please, do not burn right now. <laughs> we just had that discussion before you came in. So, so uh, to not burn. Because some of these things, because um, I know Earlier, no, end of last year, you guys adopted the new 2022 20, building, where uh, electrical codes, plumbing codes, all those codes, they actually have a building maintenance code that people need to live by, which would have saved the building next to her, because, and did, how many buildings have nothing in them? How did you say they did provide 17? that. No, I mean, I can call them over and see it's worth a shot. It's pretty hot. Can do the risk or not. Let's say there's 17 the buildings in the town that $5, people are just using for storage. Yeah, well, they have what's called a boarded building permit to where a boarded building permit shall be issued for the purpose of authorizing a building owner to board up the building. The permit shall authorize the city inspector or the fire chief to go in make sure that the building is free of anything combustible. It has to be empty. So they just can't use it for storage because who knows what's in some of these buildings. And they also have to have a key box readily accessible for all first responders. Um, I think that could take care of a lot of the buildings in town. And then to get a, per to get a boarded building permit, it's $200 just to be able to board up your building. And you can't go more than It's less than six months, and then you can reapply, but you can't board it up for more than a year. So I don't know if that's something we want to look at to get some of these people that are just using them for storage. <coughs> because who knows what's in them? I mean, we're talking about fires. You're going to open one of them, and it's going to be like open up King Tut's tomb. You're going to open that front door, and who knows what's going to come out air quality-wise. So, and if they've been boarded up for 30 years, you know, dust, combustible, who knows what they stored in there. And if it's full of mold after a few years, that's just going to take it all the way out to the outside. And that would be affecting businesses on the sides, which would have prevented yours. Mm -hmm. So we've got code 360, that E code thing. So does the city of Hollister. So they adopted this code. I get bored and I'm kind of a computer nerd sometimes. So I just went online and searched everything. We paralleled a lot of their, I mean, copy and paste, dang near word for word through the building regulations, but they have this boarded building permit in the building maintenance code. Oh, sorry, it's not a key box, it's a knock box. Right. So right there, nice. get the correct terminology. Gives you a definition of what a knock box is, a key box. So we can set a lot of regulations for these people that just want to use them as storage and not what they are, because they're technically they're costing us money. And if we need to increase 15 to 20 percent per year, we need businesses to want to be in there and not next to, you know, like I, I drive by that almost every day, I feel bad. You know, she has her business on the side. So Salon by Design mm -hmm. has theirs. Right. And then you have this one that you just need to drive a truck through because it's that bad. You know, so when we we require the engineer's report. And the engineer's report came back with, uh, I don't know, $150,000 worth of engineering work to go in there and do it right. It was yeah, it's check, not, it's not cheap when you do it right. No, we're no, talking about the one right up here. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think I saw that. We're, we're so so, so the, the new owner come in and bought it, 
he came in wanting to get a building permit. And we told him no, we had to have this the engineer's report. So he went out and got an engineer's report, brought it in and said, there it is. It says the same thing. $100,000 liability coverage plus the engineer's structural day-by-day -day supervision of this building because you're going to collapse two more businesses. Yeah. Because it always he's done nothing. Because there's where the rubbish, combustible, and non-combustible waste materials, you know, shall not. There's no way shell. just to put a roof on it. You can't. You just can't just no. put a roof on it. It doesn't have the walls <coughs> to hold it. And then those those flat roofs that they do there, since that's you know it's a non-slope roof, those flat roofs are expensive. That poured rubber coating they put on there, right? It's expensive. You're not you're supposed to if you go up on that. We've got that at work. It's two people, one person. You have to have a special pair of shoes. They have to inspect your shoes when you go on, and when you come off, they track where you walk. I mean, it's it's ridiculous to walk on a roof. It's a flat roof, nonetheless, but it's the coating of the material. Any rock you have on your shoes will puncture that coating, and it's done. I mean, I've seen that stuff bubble and just look like the whole roof blistered. So that's probably a big expense on that stuff too. So. Yeah. But I don't know if we, I mean if we can look into doing the maintenance codes to get some of these buildings. I mean Angela says we got to come up 15 to 20 percent. A building sitting as a storage unit is not making any money. It's not encouraging other businesses to move into the side. And so I don't I don't know. I mean thoughts. That was part of my other you know, ordinance review on or you know, in the dangerous buildings mm -hmm. and thing. So. Yeah, and I was, as a person who has that adjoining wall, mm -hmm. I would like to see something, if you guys do this in, into the city code or something, that um, there has to be an engineering uh, setup to support that adjoining wall. Yeah, that's what we were Yeah, that's what we were requiring. Good. Yeah, and that's okay. what the engineer came back to. Yeah, good. They, they would have to. Yeah, that guy should yeah. have, when you're doing stuff, he should have a contractor come in. That's probably got, I mean, we're not, not a million million, we're talking five or ten million dollar insurance policy. Insurance policy yeah. Especially if he's going to do something like that. Mm -hmm. He came in and talked to me and presented some kind of cheesy paperwork without any thing mm -hmm. that looked valid on it whatsoever and I said bring me a legitimate one and we'll talk. So, so should we have Bill look over the orders from Wall Street? Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean I just was like, you know, I just Googled yeah. and I got onto this one and then I, the only reason I noticed that I wasn't on Foresight because it's on that code 360. Mm -hmm. The only reason I noticed I wasn't on Forsyth is because Forsyth is green, and then I was working night shift too, but Hollister's is purple. And I'm like, what What did I read? Where did I find this? And so I started looking, and in the upper corner, it says Hollister. I'm like, how did I get there? It was 2, 3 in the morning, I was tired. But it's something I think we need to, to look at. Yeah, I agree. We need to put teams in it and yep. make them pay. And yeah. this, I mean, the boarded building permit, if somebody wants to board it up, fine. It says 200 bucks permit from the city. We probably could say you want to board this up, it's going to cost you 500 bucks. You know, kind of make it a deterrent of, we'd really like to see a business in there. We need to see business. Correct. And it says Nathan will have full access at all times, whenever he wants to do a spot inspection. Because let's say you drive by and you see somebody going in there, it's like, well, there's not supposed to be anything in there. Hey. 24 hour notice, I'm coming to inspect. And they have to be there. So and I made a city complaint on that because there was a, a shopping cart sitting in the back and that back door was unlocked. So. Well, I wouldn't want anybody in that thing right now, but. So, Nate, can you get with you and Will and uh, try to figure up what, and with Bill, what needs to be, what we can do for fine wise on this and I mean be, how the process that we're going to need for it because on these houses right now <coughs> to get this started so okay yeah I don't think the value of the fine really matters the point the point is to get them 
where they got to answer Correct. multiple Correct. people to Correct. encourage yes. them to get it done. And if we give them, you know, there's, I think Bill had mentioned something, uh, maybe there's potential some grants to be able to look at it to help with that. I don't know. Yeah. That's stuff that we can look into. For yeah. sure. but if somebody gets hurt, if we've sent them a nuisance letter, we can't, I pulled probably four of them that how we kind of want to proceed because chapter 410 plan for Shepherd of the Hills golf course. Um, can we just, is it, is it kosher just to delete that? Yeah, we can, we can repeal them. We also have a service that periodically goes through and, and codifies yeah. our city code. Because this was, I mean, 1956. And and they, they, they wouldn't yeah, necessarily know what we want to take Months out. Months ago. So yeah, we can. We're going to bring several in at a time. We're bringing several in yeah. to review them because as the just like the RV one it, they're becoming outdated that one had yeah. been done in 1980 something and well, I, I mean look how so many things have changed have to make it so so should we make an ordinance to get rid of it yeah we, or if we would if we had a whole list of them we, we could just, just go through all go through so and appeal would those need to be an agenda item then yes. okay. okay so just put those on the next agenda I agree okay. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. I got a bunch of night shifts coming up. I'll find them. <laughs> but well, one of them that I, I really wanted to talk about is since there was a theft out in Shoals Bend, and how much did they say? What six grand worth of stuff was stolen? They haven't never given me a dollar amount. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just I just heard that from a lot, and I think we need to make a differentiation between living in an RV and staying in an RV while you're building, because technically. If somebody puts an RV up while they're building, they're actually in compliance with OSHA 192651 because if it had, they're supposed to have a full functioning toilet on the job site. For 20 or less, they need one toilet. Anything above 20, you need a toilet in a urinal. So, if somebody, you know, if they have an active building permit, they're moving in the direction of getting into the home. They're not going to be living in it. They're showing progress of moving forward. I mean, you drop a hundred thousand dollars worth of lumber out there. I'd like to stay on site to protect it. And with and Chief Forrest can enlighten us to this ring that he has. Yeah, there's a, a theft ring going on hitting job sites and oh, just, really? just stealing everything. So like there was one and it was the rainstorm Thursday? Yeah, it's about between six and seven thirty they broke into a construction trailer and stole a few tools out of it it was after the rainstorm so it was like eight o'clock in the morning so it's not like it's happening at night it's happening like eight o'clock in the morning and i don't know i think we need to make the differentiation between living and staying you know because it, it allows people to finish their houses faster and they're providing anybody that works on it a toilet I agree with you 100% because you're isolated out there. Mm -hmm. There is no street lights to speak of. Uh, we've got patrolmen out there, but not not regular enough, uh, not often enough to cover, cover all that. Well, that they, were, they were said 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. They're pretty good at rounds. So I agree. this, this but, ring that hit out there, I mean, they knew exactly when the police were going to patrol, and they did it probably right after you guys left. Mm -hmm. But it could be the homeowner or a construction <coughs> company, either one. Correct. Get you look side. legitimate. You look like a legitimate construction company and you can be in there grabbing stuff. Correct. I mean, yeah. No, I, I agree. I think we ought to do that. So I've had, we've had some discussions and issues with that in the past, mm -hmm. and I think that's the right thing to do. But if they have an active building permit, you can protect your job site. Right. And give it a timeline. We don't want to stretch this job out for a year and a half. No, because, well, technically, I mean, it says a person may place, keep, or maintain any pro properly licensed recreational vehicle within the city. Such persons or entities property provided such vehicle is kept neat, presentable, and operational. So when you look at operational, that technically could mean you're connected to water, you're connected to power, you're connected to sewer. Right. You're fully operational. If you walk out there and it's not licensed, they're in the wrong. So, yeah, I well, think we've got we've got construction trailers out here, mm -hmm. the new low income housing thing. Yep, and they're probably in violation of our law, but that's global. Mm -hmm. They've got to be there, need to be there, and they should have somebody on site. Especially with. Do you also want to do camping trailers? 
Well, they, like that's a, what they like are. Like an RV. Like an RV. They're, 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 they're camping, they're they are. They're camping trailers. Okay. So yeah. if we, made, if we just made a differentiation between it, if they have an active building permit. In Stone County with our planning and zoning, uh -huh. it's permitted for six months. Yeah. While you're doing it. Okay. And if they so. don't get it finished in six months, give them a short extension. Uh -huh. yeah. I was going to say the, the building permit process does allow a one time 180 day permit extension. And I do agree, I think it is an excellent idea yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll during construction that. of the house. Okay. Because yeah. I know there's, I mean, we, yeah. Shoals Bend is kind of out of the way, but if you do it for Shoals Bend, if there's, I, I don't even know if there's lots for sale in the city. Mm -hmm. Are there? Mm -hmm. yep. So sure. if somebody was to have an active yeah, building permit, Make it citywide. City wide. And then it's, then it's fair, but the second it's done, you need to comply. The thing needs to be on the side of your house properly done. Right. And I think city inspector needs to go out there every week or hour, whatever your schedule is, and see that they're continuing the process, mm -hmm. not just camping out there for free yeah. while they put a two or four up every week. I, I would like to add in a that it's non renewable for that purpose because I could see the potential of somebody pulling a permit giving all everything that they need for the permit, pay $50, $100 on a permit, and then that gives them six months of effectively free rent on a property, and then that goes up because they didn't do anything. So they pull another one, and that's cost effective for potentially. Yeah, well, but, I mean, I agree that it is a good idea. You know, your, your framing, you know, your framing, your electrical inspection, your plumbing, if for some reason you can't get a guy to come out and drill a well, I mean that that should hold up a process. Uh, and, and that's why we have the extensions. So I agree. Like that, so. Right. Well, but where are we parking these things? Not on city streets, right? No, not on city streets. No, okay. this is this. It says by the ordinance. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, guys. And then, do we have a? Does our ordinance provide after the house is built that RVs and yes. such things can only be? Parked in a driveway. My understanding is they must be parked to the side or behind the house. Yeah, such vehicles must be stored or parked within a side or rear yard yeah. and must not comply with the city yeah. size. Yeah. But right. you read that drive through cornerstone. You know, it's not on the side, it's in the front of their house in the driveway, but it's still in the driveway. So I don't know, I mean so if that's an enforcement issue, if somebody complains? As it's, it's written now, yes, it would be an enforcement. You're not on the side. But the people, like if you live in Cornerstone, you can't park it on the side. That's a, I mean, some people just can't do that. Yeah, so some people can't. So, but, in right, but some people also can't park in a driveway that they don't have on um, Blair because they bought a house that doesn't have a driveway. <laughs> but So you make a driveway mm -hmm. or you don't buy an RV. You know, you can't recreate the wheel for everybody who wants something that's not there. Well, I just don't want them parked in the city streets <clears throat> while we're building a house. And, I, you know, they need to figure out how they Good can get days. it on the lot and if they're going to stand up. I completely agree that you want to protect your stuff mm -hmm. because there's too much stuff right now. And it also and makes it less expensive for people to be able to build a house. Yeah. Uh, that they could stay there. Right. Um, right. Right. So, anyway, um, so we can, we need to draw that up probably okay. and get that properly so, ordered. So, if you uh, want to start on that too, we're giving you all kinds of homework. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So. And well, I got, I got one more that okay. I kind of want to bring up because in going through and reading all of these, um, this is what I can do in Shadow Rock, right? It's uh, as far as having dogs, cats, stock, or poultry. So in chapter 225, it says dogs, cats, stock, poultry, or any other domestic animals are not permitted to range within the park at any time. Pets are permitted only when on a leash. So by reading that, we've already classified dogs, cats, stock, poultry, or other domestic animals as a pet. So. That was written in 1970, and then we have the one where the, the no chicken ordinance. I would just like to delete this because, and I don't even think we need to create a special ordinance for chickens and just 
you, you listen to my reasoning here. Who has dogs? I have. How many do you have? I have two and they're... Why don't you have 10? Uh, I can't afford 10. <laughs> My, my thing is where it's in now. You can't yeah. afford in two in the city anyway. Right. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what that works too anyway. Yeah. So the chickens eating <laughs> pets would fall under the same ordinance as dogs, cats, anything like that. If you have a barking dog, it's a nuisance violation. Or you put a bark collar on it. You know, I can hear bark collar or dogs barking all the way in Kizzy Mills. Um, so if somebody did want to have a rooster, there's things they make that you can put around their neck not to allow them to crow. It's kind of funny when they try to, but you can't even hear them. Because a normal hen is about 60 decibels, which is what a conversation is outside from like 25 feet. So noise, and I think all the other, like if a neighbor complained, or chief drives by and you see a tiny little cage with 10 chickens in there. That's animal cruelty. And I think the people that would want to get the chickens are going to treat them as pets. They're not going to let them free range, you know. Yeah, we can't have free range. No. Just like well, animals. Yeah. They, just like dogs. They just, just like dogs, you know. I'm probably in violation of it because my dog just lays in the front yard, not on a leash. If I let the chickens roam out there, there's three hawks' nests, they're probably, somebody's getting breakfast or lunch. So, the people that are going to get chickens would have, would take care of them like pets. And I don't think we need a special ordinance stating numbers, size, because we don't tell people really to do that with dogs. Per se, we don't tell somebody, your dog house has to be this big. You know, if you see somebody that chained their dog up outside, no water, no food, I mean, that's animal cruelty. If they did the same thing to chickens, it's the same thing. And I don't know. I read a lot, and sometimes I, but we kind of define them as pets. And there's other things in here about how to confine animals under as pets. It even talks about your leash shall be constructed of a mean or leash cord, chain, leather strap, or line for leading or restraining a dog, cat, or other animal, and being no longer than six feet in length. So. I, don't know, I wanted to bring that up because I think there's a lot of people out there that want to provide for their family. I mean, if you've gone to the grocery store, eggs are stupid. Eggs used to be 69 cents, 79 cents. They're like four dollars, you know. I, think I, don't, I saw I, a thing on the Today Show yesterday that said they went up 67 percent. Yeah, I think there'd be, and, but and I think that even if we put it out there, the people that were actually going to take the leap and do this is going to because. I know that when I read one of the articles that like 300 and some people signed a petition like in 2019 or something. If that, if, that was just, if that was just the people that were okay with it, I would say probably a pretty aggressive estimate of how many people would actually go through that might be 10%, which is probably super aggressive. It probably be more like 2 to 3%. So we're literally talking 5 to 10 people in town might get them. If you could smell your neighbor's chicken coop, that's a nuisance because that falls right into that dilapidated health and safety, everything that way. That's somebody not taking care of their animals. And if you can smell it as a neighbor, I'm sure if Chief Forrest came out there, they'd smell it too, you could find them on the spot. There would be no, you have 10 days to clean this up, that's animal <laughs> cruelty. Find them on the spot. So I think if we just came to a consensus that we just treated them all like the pets that they're turning into, you know, because you could also push for the emotional support animal issue. And if somebody wanted to get one, they are free to do that right now based on the Constitution if they deem that chicken they needed that as an emotional support animal. I know it's funny, but... I get emotional when I can't have eggs. There you go. <laughs> You and me both. So, I live off of it. Hangry. You it's an emotional, if you look at the, what is it, the DMR, it's actually listed. I'm, I'm trying to remember the list. Yeah. I See? It's probably four when I last read it. But right. Yeah. 
Can, can uh, I, know. I mean, there, there are ordinances yeah. that we already have on the books. What you got? So, here's where I come from this. I know that a lot of people have dogs in town. The dog calls all day. They put the dog on the leash, dog gets loose, goes over to the neighbor's yard. Then I have to go take my time either, one, A, to track down the owner. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't have them, they don't have them licensed to the city. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine if you're unlicensed to them. But trying to find the dog owner. If not, I take it to the pound. How much does it cost for town to come get a dog to the city? Eighty dollars minimum, maybe a hundred. Then we still have to do the vet first. Well, we we have to pay the animal to come, come, come get the dog. And if they don't come get it, we're still the money. Mm -hmm. So I I take time. Now, do you want me in this department, officers included? We're all, we're always short staff. Correct. We're always got a caseload of at least ten <laughs> ten cases behind. Do you want us to stop what we're doing? on the stealing case to find somebody's stuff that's stolen to go wrangle up a bunch of chickens. No. Now, I'm all for raising stuff. I yeah. think, you know, we should all raise our own food. I, I, I love the organic thing. Uh -huh. But where are we going to come up with a medium on this? Because we've got dogs and all the people don't have dog tags in town. They don't pay for them. I tell them, you, got, you, have to go do, you have to go get your dog tags. That way I know where you're at. They have too many dogs, right? So, has too many cats. so how are we going to go through all this and say, if you want chickens, now what's going to, chickens are going to get out. Unless you keep them in locked room, mm -hmm. they're going to get out. A neighbor's dog's going to get loose, bust through your chicken wire, and eat your chickens. Then I've got to call for service. Mm -hmm. i got to stop my stealing case. And I got to go over and deal with your call, your call for service for, and yet something else in town that is, it's not here. We don't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to deal with that? Do we make them pay for like they do with a dog? You pay X amount of dollars to keep a chicken, so it generates some sort of revenue for the city because it takes time out of us to deal with people's animals because they're going to get loose. Correct. We could have it the same licensing fee. As a dog or a cat, if we're going to if we're going to deem them a pet, a dog. it'd be the exact same thing. I wouldn't I mean, yeah, taking away from like the stealing case. Yeah, never want to would take away from that. It would be like you know, it's almost like some of these dog runs out in the street and gets hit by a car. You know, like I, without Joel Ben, we knew it was a possibility. Um, I hadn't got to mow this grass, and our cat liked to go out at night, and we're pretty sure a mountain lion got him because the tra cat track was this big. And I found him, and that was my fault because where he liked to go, the grass, the bigger cat was just waiting there. So I think people that got the chickens would have to accept the fact that if a neighbor's dog broke through their chicken cage and attacked them, they really weren't properly secure to a degree. Well, coming coming from a county, mm -hmm. I had chickens. The next time growing up, growing up, neighbor's dogs come over there. Chicken wire. Sometimes they'll dig under it. They'll mm -hmm. go in there, and they'll get into your chickens. Mm -hmm. Now you can take it up with the neighbor, see in that. But then it becomes more of a civil issue, a criminal issue. Which one it is? The dog at large. They're out money for their chickens are all dead. You know the kid's heartbroken because all of his pet chickens are now dead. Right. So we have a problem. Then also, I mean. You know, we have a wonderful red fox population in town. <laughs> and the fox are voting for chickens. Don't leave out the coyotes. Conservation <laughs> 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 yeah. department says that those are nuisance animals and you can get rid of them. Coyotes? Yes. Strike by yeah. the cats were getting destroyed. And bow and arrows are legal in Forsyth. Yeah. Yeah. With, with, with a permit in, during hunting season. So my question is, with all this, coyotes, all this talk about nuisance and coyotes, stuff, nuisance. That's, that puts a large amount of extra on the police department. We're going to have to figure out something. We're short staff still. Mm -hmm. I got one in the academy. He will not be out until December. Then he's still going to go through three months of training before he's ready to go to the road. So until then, um, we 
the more stuff that we have to do, like go into news and space and stuff like that, I have to take criminal investigations and put them on the back burner and wait for that because we don't have a detective. So we need to, I'm asking you guys, figure out, you know, which lane we're going to drive in on this. Because if we, we get all this stuff and get going on this stuff, it's going to put a lot of weight on the police department because we are the ones that issue the summonses. We're the ones that go out to the animal calls. You know, I can round up a bunch of chickens and throw them in the patrol car and try to find out where they go. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see the chicken. <laughs> I bet you I can catch more chicken. I bet he could too. I went to the <laughs> You know, and that could be we could, you know, because one of the towns I lived in had it, and one of the things the city there required was all the people knew each other. So everybody that had chickens already knew each other. So they had a, it was Cold Strip Montana chicken Facebook page. Everybody was on there. Everybody knew where they were. So if all the citizens knew where these were, and I talked with, in thinking through my thought process here, I talked with Hollister and Branson, like, how many chicken calls have you gotten? Right. And Hollister said, you know, when we first enacted it, it was, we've had one call because the chicken hopped the fence and the lady didn't know that it could get over the fence, so they just said, hey, let's clip its wings. Just clip one of the wings, it can't fly. And they fixed it that way. So I think if we did it to where, to take pressure off of you, if the people that wanted to get them collectively would work together, because ultimately you're going to have somebody that gets into the chicken business and then says, "This is way too much. I want out. What do I do with these?" I mean, I can't turn, you know, either chicken well, like, soup or give them away. We start. We try to like a county. When I was a deputy there, they have cattle owners mm -hmm. in the area, and you go through, and it, it's on the map who owns the cattle. Mm -hmm. But not always do we know who owns cattle. You'll drive up and you see cattle standing in the middle of the roadway and you're like, I have no idea who you belong to. So if that's something that you can get them to get more people and tell them, we need to get your dogs registered. If it wasn't for me driving by and a guy goes, hey, I have a dog. Yes, yeah. we would have went to the pound and, and we, would be, we would be out money. Now that person also is Once out again, money. I think that's educating our public which we don't do and maybe we need to. I try and every time I get a dog. Not call, just call not just that. We have we have Facebook, we have we have a website and stuff. There's no reason we can't put those things out there and try to educate them. That we have actually uh, dog licenses so we can identify your dog if it gets out. Yeah. And um, that we can actually help and get your dog home sooner and not take it to the pound and cost you uh, arm and a leg. And um, as far as the chickens go, um, I just saw a post just probably a month ago or something. Somebody, and this is how social media helps you, is uh, somebody said, in Mer it was Miriam Woods, and somebody said, hey, somebody's chicken's on my, on my porch, and, and then nobody said much about it, you know, and said, if nobody comes and gets it, I'll come and get it, it can join my mine. Mm -hmm. And they did. Yes. They came and got it, and it <coughs> was in theirs. And they said, if anybody comes looking for it, this it's it. here. I so have. So we did that. And they put it on social media. I seen uh, out somebody saying, um, "There's a cow out yes. on the on social media. Mm -hmm. Anybody know oh, whose cow this is?" And people started responding and stuff. And I think social media is our friend as far as that goes. And. Um, I've had good luck with the dog posting Yeah, you have, here. and that is great. Yeah. Um, I think you get a good response from that, and um, I think um, when people have these things in common, these um, hobbies, yeah. and pets in common, because it's the that they it, that it becomes a community. Yeah. And so you get more of a support than you do a nuisance issue. What was the? Is this the third week? The third week of the month? Is this the third week? Second week of the month? Second. So the yeah. second week of the month, every Monday. Um, and the, the guy's his name's Lloyd. He's at the farmers market. He runs a bee education forum for anybody that wants to get into bees. Him and they've got this local group that all get together and they they want to do bees. So they educate anybody new that wants to come into it. We can do that with the chickens, you know, to say, you know, to really educate people. This is what you're really getting into. You know, this isn't these aren't like a cat. Can have a class up at the farmers market. Or the, and another the. Um, 
4 H does something. The, the, the 4 H of the egg yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. What's that by the? Is that the egg? No. No, it's 4 H. It's 4 H. It's 4 H. Yes. yes. Yeah. There's a lady there that's got great info on how to do it. Uh, I think it would and it'd benefit the kids. I think it'd go a long way with the school because if the kids wanted to do 4 H, if they wanted to show a chicken, having it at school versus having it at home, you know, it's that quality bonding time because I mean you got to do stuff with the chicken going upside down. And if they're doing it an hour a day at the school, they're not going to be very successful 4 H wise. Um, I think we could grow involvement for the school there, so the school could teach a class. Um, Would it be acceptable to to suggest that maybe um, like does not work together on and with and talk with chief and maybe more of the next month and see if we can plan to talk about in August. And like I said, Facebook's a great educator. Like, if anybody wanted to do coop um, designs, I mean, the, the chicken, there's this backyard chicken site, and sometimes you look at people and go, holy cow, you're crazy, and some people are elaborate, some people are small, but they put out all this, like, great knowledge of stuff, and it's become, I mean, it's big. I mean, if you can have chickens in St. Louis, Portland, Kansas City, San Francisco, people have them right on their apartment, Falcons, you know, this little coop thing right there. They got two or three chickens right there. You know, collectively, if like we said, everybody knew each other that wanted to, you know. They're a little different than dogs, though. You know, you don't want to really take, always take in somebody else's dog. Um, you know, it, you know, it's somebody. There are people that would, will do it. And stuff, but they're, they, you don't really want to take in somebody's dog, but. Honestly, if somebody's chicken was loose, I'd just pick it up and put it in with mine. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And they, they they'll assimilate through a pecking order. Anyway, but yeah. um, yeah, I yeah. know I, I'm I'm I've never been against chickens because of the I grew up with chickens and you know I, we lived out on a farm, had chickens, and I can tell you they defecate a lot less than my two dogs do. Mm -hmm. and, um, but anyway, um, I'm, you know, it's my, the only concern I have is being neighborly. And, um, you know, whether they're neighborly to somebody that isn't very appreciative of chickens on a tight, in a tight area. Correct. And, and where, I, where I lived in Washington, we had a 40 or 5,000 square foot lot. We had chickens in the backyard, and we had two neighbors on the side. We asked them if they would be okay with it. We also talked with the police because you weren't supposed to have them. And they just, the police told us, if we don't get any complaints, we don't care. Well, they saw our yard, and you see these uh, bugs all over the side of your house. We didn't have any, and our neighbors did. But we all had fenced yards, and they said, why don't you have any bugs? The only thing different we have is chickens. We loaned our chickens out. They got to go run around their yard. They ate all the bugs. Yeah. On there, so. They do. They eat. You know, and, and like the the one thing, if somebody, you know, and this would go in, if somebody wanted to get a guinea, that would definitely be a noise thing. Those things are obnoxious. I would have a problem with a rooster. Um, I listen to mom, my mom's every time I'm talking on the phone with her, and mm -hmm. that thing crows all day long. I bet yeah. 50 times yeah. an hour. If you went, it drives those, me crazy if talking you saw those to callers, her. <laughs> they don't make any noise. Hens are actually louder yeah. than a rooster. So it's kind of funny. that would not be neighborly. Mm -hmm. That I mean, it just wouldn't. I wouldn't want to listen to that. Hens are only noisy when they're, they're really when not they're noisy. noisy. The roosters really. can get roosters are awful. Yeah. And I hear yeah. roosters over at Kizzy Mills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So across the river. So if you if you went that direction, um, you all chose to go that direction, I would say no roosters. It's just not neighborly. I'd like to see a limit to them as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. so many of them, especially with some of the lot sizes that we have in town. Well, it's, it's they'd right. have to have, you know, I mean, um, they're, it's not, they're not free range, so they would have to be in their cages, and so you could only put so many in it certain size cage anyway so, yeah. and with the yeah. cost of things so. it's it's expensive yeah. to start up it is expensive yeah. i mean from I mean, my mom and dad give away their <laughs> their eggs to all the neighbors and stuff but they 
And but it cost them quite a bit. Yeah, because your coop is, I mean, ethically, it's three square feet per bird, uh -huh. and then the run is eight to ten square feet per bird. So you really, I mean, if you have a small lot, you really can't have that no, taken you over because you, you know, technically, yeah. you got to be back from your neighbor's fence, and that would not be being neighborly. Right. You know, so and then I mean, I would encourage people that wanted to do it that had a small lot. My concern is neighborly, to talk to but neighbors. I completely understand. I mean, the the way eggs have gone this day and age, and um, you know, to me, they're less offensive mm -hmm. than some of the dogs around here. And so, anyway, um, you know, and I'm sure some of my neighbors would think they were less offensive than my dogs, who like to bark a lot. And so, anyway, um, but. Um, you know, the, it, I'm just concerned, like I said, about being neighborly and away from somebody's fence and not right up to somebody's house. I'm sure my, the way my house sits, my backyard, it's the side, it's only, um, my neighbor only has about six feet, right? Mm -hmm. You think he has like six feet from my back wall? He would not want my chicken house right up six feet from his. And so anyway, um, I'm just saying, my husband ain't gonna let me have it, but it, I'm just saying, uh, it, he wouldn't, you know. So it'd just be a thing of being neighborly so that you are not offending your neighbor and but by your, something that you wanted. Correct. If your neighbor had them and you could say, hey, mm -hmm. keep it clean, mm -hmm. if you'd give me eggs when I need them, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll make a trade, you know. I if like it was kind of you Honestly, you know. I mean, they, they lay so well, you know, most of them do. They, you, you can't even eat as many as Correct. they're producing. And so, anyway, I could. You probably could. <laughs> yeah. We started glassing eggs now, so. Yeah. The water glassing, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't yeah. tell you how many I have, but you'd think I was a hoarder. I wonder so, how long they actually last. Uh, so you put it in like this lye solution and yeah, it's water. Yeah, I know, I've seen it. Them. It's pretty yeah, cool. Where they store. Right, I guess it did actually pioneer your days on a kind mm -hmm. of history. Yeah, I've seen so. a lot of that. Actually, I've read some of that lately. Yeah. And, uh, anyway. No but, uh, my nightly junk mail call. There's people like me that cannot, um, I'm, I know I'm not the only one. I cannot eat processed eggs. So I have to go to somebody like R.J. Matlinch in their house and some, I get them from different people because I've got some from Angela's, is her daughter? And um, because I cannot eat them, processed eggs. So I have to get somebody's, egg, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a big difference. There's something that happens in the processing that it does not agree with my, my internal system. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah, it just actually makes me literally sick. And so um, it's like I'm allergic or something. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm not the only one that could be happening to. So. Because um, I have I, something Hollister did. Because Hollister's got like a 20 page ordinance. It's crazy about everything. The one thing they put in there, because you're talking about neighborly, it said you had to seek neighbor approval. So if your neighbors didn't approve of it, you could not go past that. You couldn't even go apply to the city with your permit. You come here, hey, here's where I live. You check the neighbors, you sign it. Okay, all my neighbors signed it. Now you can come in and get your chicken permit. And then it'd be like. That is a good idea. I like that. I, I like so they that, did that. So, if the neighbor, so if the neighbors don't sign off about it. I've got neighbors who can't take care of their leaves. I know they won't take care of their chickens. And that, that's that, is, that is some Absolutely. of the concern. That the is another one of my leaves. concerns is to, um, and just one of them, um, is that we got people that don't actually take care of the pets they currently have and and um, you know if they then throw in chickens on top of that and something they're not taking care of I don't know I don't know what to do as far as that goes so we need to have something but I would estimate probably five to ten people might get them yeah you know because like she said I mean if you see some of these oh, I online, think be more. Who, who's gonna go drop a couple thousand dollars on a chicken coop yeah. right now you know and there's some coops out there that cost 10 grand i think there'll be a lot more because i mean i've heard about it so much from so many different people um and like i said before i don't have anything mm -hmm. against chickens at all the only thing i have is just the neighborly yeah. thing because if somebody and, went to walmart and got the walmart special 200 coop 
That's only for two to four birds. I know it is. So it's, small. it's a small one. Yeah. But it's only for two to four birds. It says yeah. right on it. So. Yeah, well, if we're so. going to do this, I think we need to get the neighbor thing. I do too. We need to limit the chickens, no roosters, and require the pin size that whatever you said, if one chicken gets two first square to be, feet. And that's just in the, I mean, there's a whole website of the ethical raising I think that all needs to be followed. Yeah. Yep. If we're going to do I'm curious it. about the uh, regulation of the sale of uh, eggs. Are you going to tax the sale? Or are you going to regulate the sale? Who's I would gonna, say no. Who's I would say you're not allowed to sell them. It's in all the other ordinances that we were pulling from in the past. It, it's it prohibits the sale. sale. So, so your resident, but they will, and your residents will now be competing with your grocery stores that you're looking for more tax dollars from. That is true. That's true. That is true. That is true. Um, but, if, but if we're limiting the number that they have, like a, a hen might lay one egg a day. Oh, I've, I've had dozens of chickens. Right. And I moved to the city to get away from them. So, if if somebody knows that they can't sell the eggs right and if we cap the number of eggs that they can have anyway i mean it would be so not that much competition yeah. yeah um it would be uh, there's no sale yeah no, well, it would are. just be i know that they're going to probably do it because i mean yeah but it, red, red we would put that coming this way there's you know, okay. Right. And, and having had outside. having had dozens of chickens, guineas, uh, peacocks, we came from a 2,000 acre farm. We've had right. it all. You're going to have to give us the ability to uh, to uh, deal with right. the predators. Right. So we're going to have to repeal the firearms uh, law here in the city, <laughs> so we can shoot them. Because we're already overrun the fox up on Skyline. Oh, the deer in my neighborhood are horrible. We also have panthers. Mm -hmm. well, I've got coyotes in my neighborhood. <laughs> Yeah, we got those. They're not. Uh, they eat everything. <laughs> the bark yeah, off and everything. Okay. So we'll go back and do the next day. Just start working on it. Okay. I'm leaving it to you guys. You're the ones that you certainly, want it. You certainly shouldn't blindside the public with something. I don't think so. Be, yeah, I think you should. I think we need to. Well, we're, well I, you're, you've I got a video. I think I've seen a lot on Facebook so, about. When are we getting chickens? If or there are have anybody, just the complaints, you but, know. But we shouldn't run the city based on Facebook. Correct, I know. But you see a lot of the, the keyboard let's put, let's warriors. Put, put it on the ballot. You know, on there, so. Let's put it on the ballot. Yeah. What's it cost us to put it on the ballot? About $5,000. There you go. That seems like a waste of city funding. Just increase, the, increase the chicken permit fee. Space. It takes okay, out. well, it wouldn't be much. Mm -hmm. Well, we had, we had a petition come in. I think it was 100 signatures. It was a, no, it, it was, was a, more than that. It was 130, 140 ish because okay, yeah, yeah, the number required is out of 2,400 so, people in the city. Yeah, but not very many people vote either. So. Yeah, okay. that, well, and that was, I, in my yeah. defense, because I ran that petition, it was July and it was 100 degrees. <laughs> So when I reached the minimum number of signatures I needed, right. I stopped. Right. So I could have kept on going, I yeah. guarantee you that. How many did you ask to get that? So what was the percentage? Like how many doors got yeah. in my face? Yeah. Like two? Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, granted, some people weren't home because of the time yeah. of day or whatever, but I mean, everybody was very willing to sign the petition. Yeah, so if you had a 100% success ratio with your petition, it's not like you were being told in no way. No. So putting it on the ballot, spending two plus thousand dollars to have it voted on is a waste of money. So I'm inviting anybody that doesn't want chickens to come to next month's meeting or have a spokesman for it. Um, because I, mean, I know there's people out there that don't. But I don't know who they are. Right. And shall we put an RSVP on there, though, and invite those who are in favor at the same time so that we know if we need to move it to the right. auditorium? Well, I know or that there's a lot. I know that there's yes. a lot in favor. You don't have to tell me that because I, I know there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've talked to enough people. I just haven't heard from the people that, besides Craig, that doesn't want it. For you and, um, and that's in town, and Jack. Yeah. Jack doesn't. Right. But um, I mean, technically, we have two competing ordinances that classifies chickens and poultry as pets and domestic animals, and then one that says not keeping it. Right. So which one do you go by? Because the one from like 1970 was not repealed, so that's still in effect. And then the one from 20, 
So well, that's yeah. so we basically need to address the the ordinance next month to decide what we want. Uh -huh. Whether it's delete this one or that. Right? Yeah. So anyway, um, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to leave out the people that might not want it to ignore them too. But um, I guarantee, yeah. I I don't know. Mayor, can you have them sign up? Come in during the day and sign it, well, just like a either for or against so you're not making them come to a public meeting and speak up because a lot of people would stay away from that i know hesitation. It, plus it's more convenient to run by when they drop out their water bill or something and go yeah. you know we could put it on a water bill you know for or we against could. we could put it on a water bill and as they bring it in. back in too. i know granted some of us like me have it automatically debited but i still get a bill um although i just told her this week to go mm -hmm. pay Paperless. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> That's a good idea. That way, we get the entire population to yeah. voice yeah. their opinion. When they, I think, if everybody brought in their water bill with a yes or no for chickens on it, um, I think we can put a little box that has check yes or no, and they can their signature or whatever. We can put some of that on the bill, can't we? Up to thirty-two characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and um, and bring that in and that gives us a little bit of an idea to start with for next month and um, what do you think I mean I think it's only fair so that everybody gets to speak yeah. you know and I mean not everybody can come so uh, or wants to come you probably um, get a better response from rather that than you will so the other stuff so yeah. people coming in. and by the way thank you all for coming i really appreciate it when people show up and we like your opinions and i'm i'm, I'm appreciative of that so anyway just throwing that out there all right so we did you have anything else on your ordinance thing no just another interesting one i found it emergency preparedness organization it's like straight out of the cold war <laughs> it says in case of enemy attack could happen hey, we've got I hey, that's more the current now than ever there you go it's right here it's all right here we were talking, i like history they were talking about stone county oh <laughs> new york just put out a psa okay so Adopt a mission statement and vision statement. This is Miss Heskett. Okay, so in the uh, in the same light of uh, being neighborly, it occurred to me at some point that the city of Forsyth does not have a mission statement nor a vision statement, um, and mission statements serve to communicate purpose and direction Great. to employees, customers, vendors, all stakeholders. It basically explains what is our purpose, um, why do we exist, like, you know, like I said today, not like existentially, but like why are we here in this building. Um, and then the vision statement um, looks forward to and creates a mental image of the ideal state that the organization wishes to achieve. They're supposed to be inspirational, aspirational, challenging. Um, they kind of deal with what problems we're trying to solve and where are we headed. So if we have a vision statement and we have a mission statement, we have something that is in writing for people to refer back to, it's kind of like guiding principles for us. So we use that in our interactions in these chambers as department heads with employees, as representatives of the city, with the people out in the community. And then they can also be tied in should we ever do um, employee evaluations. It all comes back to this is why we're here and what have you done to um, support those goals for the city. Mm -hmm. so. I know every school district has a mission statement and a vision school, statement. School, businesses, so, businesses, government, yep. yeah. Um, so, yep. These were ones that I drafted. I don't know if you want to just take them. I liked it. I read through it. I liked it. Okay. Have you guys seen it? No. Uh -uh. Do you want copies or do you want me to just read it? No, just you read just it. Read it. Okay. 
Um, and your best teacher boy. <laughs> Shall I stand? Um, the proposed vision statement is with responsible stewardship of all resources, the city of Forsyth provides quality services to our residents and guests. Because it is challenging to be responsible with all of the resources at all of the time and satisfy all of the people. Um, and then the proposed mission statement, the city of Forsyth works to provide opportunities for economic development through responsible leadership and in partnership with all stakeholders. City leaders and employees reinforce the standard of community by treating all stakeholders with respect and with the purpose of making living and doing business in the city of Forsyth as carefree as possible. Okay. So it's another one you're trying to get Pretty much. I like it. Sounds good. Come on, guys. I think we ought to adopt it. I move that we adopt the proposed mission statement. Uh, second. Mission statement. Do second? Do you second? All in favor? Preston? Yes. Aye. 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 All right. Great. Thank Thank nice. Uh, nice job, Missy. All right. Parks update. Missy. Okay. I will try to keep this brief because I know it's getting late and people's phones are probably getting tired. Um, I am still diligently working on moving the trail projects forward. Um, my dates here. Um, on June 27th, I met with Dr. Boyer at the school and brought him a list of 12 different aspects to the trail project that could be incorporated into clubs and classes at the high school. Um, they are working on their MSIP 6, which has to do with community involvement. So we may be able to see some help from them. I specifically asked for help with technology. Um, so he's going to get with some teachers and get back to me on that. I then met with Jonas Artis of the Taney County Partnership and told him about the project and the ideas, and he was absolutely ecstatic over it. Um, trails in Missouri right now are absolutely huge. Next Wednesday. On the 20, I'm going to the Trails Task Force meeting at the Branson Chamber of Commerce. Um, <clears throat> and because I believe the plan is to run in trail systems all the way from Springfield down to Bentonville. So the timing for us to be putting our name out there right. and getting involved in this is just absolutely spectacular. Um, and the alt Jonas also mentioned that um, there should be some state ARPA money available for projects such as this. Also great. So we're at the ready on that. Um, we have secured a grant writer. Debbie Redford was referred to me by Jonas, I'm sure a lot of people know Debbie. Um, I'm meeting with her on Monday, and I've already given her like six different grant opportunities that were out there. Some came from Dustin and the Chamber of Commerce, and um, some I've already started working on. I'm very grateful for her, and, and that's not going to be anything out of pocket. That would just you know, these will be written in or what have you. So that's been very, very exciting. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention is that oh, I thought it was double booked for a second. No. Um, on the 25, I'm meeting with Jeanette Bear, who was the coordinator for the um, Rock House Music Festival in Reed Spring. And I think that we have I think we have some opportunity to explore a music festival or two here in town also. Mm -hmm. So she's going to give me a rundown on how she goes about it because that music festival in Reed Spring is amazing. Oh no. <coughs> um, she's down. Uh, Yeah, can, can we just push her into the shower? Yeah, he said it's kind of nasty. Oh, okay. Um, you want me to take care of it? I'll take care of it. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm letting you come up. But, in speaking about the music festival, 
I know the fair board has a demolition derby October 8th, mm -hmm. but it would be really great if we could do something in October for like an October fest. I know we've got the Harvest Moon, but that's kind of like an end of the year push for a lot of vendors. Um, so if we can throw another event, you know, kind of why not? But I think with the music festival especially, but even also with events like <clears throat> Um, with the Harvest Moon, and I did talk to Charlie, and she was going to come and broach this, but I told her I'd take care of it. Um, I, I think it would be great if we would approve beer vendors, like a beer truck or a beer tent at some of these events. You know, they do it everywhere else. Um, I talked to Chief Forrest about it, and he didn't have a problem with it at all. <clears throat> um, I mean, there are events that that we have where people are drinking anyway, and that's an issue for him. Um, when you're you know, at a beer tent or a truck or something like that, and they're five, six, seven dollars a beer, that's that's expensive. So I don't think you have to worry about excess as much. And you know, just make it clear then that you're not allowed to drive intoxicated. I have no problem with it, but I mean, well, I, I don't drink, so. I know the Harvest so Festival over in Branson, I mean, over in Hollister, they have a specific area where the rear truck or rear uh, can be right. sold. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a specific area. Okay. Yeah. Some places they allow them to wander the streets with it. Okay, so, but if we. So, like a beer garden type of yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. But if it was something like in the park, I mean, it's, it's not it's wandering around. Well, that's that's that insane. would be considered what you would consider right. as a beer garden, basically, okay. in the park. Because so, you're not on, outside off of city property. Okay. But if it was on Main Street, you would prefer... Yeah, you'd have, to have to shut, you'd have to shut it down okay. into a location. I, I, she said, Charlie said that the Elks purchased a picnic license or something in Rockaway. And it worked just fine. Um, so I'm sure that they would be willing to adhere to whatever we said. Well, I was looking at that today. Well, it, it says that we can give we can give a license to up to four entities at a time for per drink service. So like we have Well you just put another thing on your platter. Yeah you can fill on this one. So all those people that come to our beer party at the beer garden drive home. Yes, yeah, but it, so it'd be no different than anywhere else. I'm always the designated driver. So, I mean, yeah, you I would always have somebody that's going to be... Sponsored or something like that. Yeah. And uh, they're not sponsored. They're no, sponsored. you're not. It'd Proving be it. Somebody But else. we have bars. Yeah, we have bars. So what's the difference? We provide licenses for them. Yeah. yeah. But that's not us. That's them. So. Right. But if it's a chamber event or an Elks event or somebody... Or Somebody else puts the it out there. Derby, I mean, any of them. You go to any of the fair events, anything like that, there's people walking around beer there. Yep, you're so, right. And they drive home. The <laughs> yeah. city, if, if it's going to happen, yeah. our city should be in the we'll benefit games. of it in some ways. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that is true. They, they, yeah, the, they you go to the Royals it. game, there's a lot of people <laughs> drive out of there that shouldn't be driving. So. But anyway, but yeah, it, it doesn't matter where you go. It's going to happen. I mean, it just does. But yeah, I don't, I don't see where we would be responsible for it. But I may be wrong. You, the city's not selling it. To the right, we're not the ones selling it. So can you right. tax it though and make a little money off of it somehow? So we use it to make. Well, I mean, the sales tax in the city. Sales so tax. Would come that's back. where the permits and the licensing would come in. That would help too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, she's saying we Bill, don't have an ordinance about that for it, so we might have to pass something. Mm -hmm. Can I talk to you about the liquor ordinance maybe next week? Sure. Okay. 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 So then that was it for me. Okay.
All right, minutes of June 20th, 2022. I move the approval of the minutes of June 20, 2022. Okay. All, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Perfect. All right, the bills for approval. We have uh, 62322, uh, $13,106.21. Uh, uh, June 30th, 2022, $3,667.33. July 7th, 2022, $66,763.54. We're short one this month because we're early. Motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody? wants to see those i've got them too so financial statements as of june 30th 2022. i'll move the approval of the financial statements of june 30th 2022. all in favor aye aye aye, aye. Okay. and approved transfers from june 23rd 2022 through july 7th 2022. how much we approve the transfers I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And confirm monthly audit reporting sheet was received and reviewed. Yep. I move that we confirm the monthly audit reporting sheet was received and reviewed. Well, received. I can't say it was reviewed. <laughs> If you voted yes on it, you have reviewed it. There you go. How's that? I reviewed it, but I didn't say it already. Did it? I'll do it. All right. How about just a minute to, if you vote yes, you reviewed it. You reviewed it. There you go. There you go. So we'll have it for the rest. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. And once again, I want to thank all of you for coming. Appreciate your input. Every bit of it. Appreciate it so much. And they're not here, the two chiefs. The amount of stuff they've done lately to, um, I don't know, you know, Chief uh, Forrest, he, I don't know if you guys realize, but he actually drives through Jellystone too. It's a private property. And he, they allow him on just so that all of those campers know that we have law enforcement present. He gets out of the car, he talks to people. Um, I'm up there, I witness it. And I've actually got pictures of him playing ball with the kids. And um, just to make sure that people there, they're from out of town, that they know we have law enforcement present here and um, you know, and they're, they're friendly, you know, and, um, but you know, it's just, we don't know who they are and they don't know us either, but we are at least, uh, you know, putting that presence out there. And poor Chief Nate, with this heat um, and the fires they've had lately, uh, I I can't express my gratitude enough to both of them. So, anyway. As he said earlier, do not burn <laughs> yes. at this time. Yes, yep, so. It's not wise. Anyway, so. I guess we're ready to close this meeting unless the shower or... demo permit is only for the front building, correct? That, not the motel part, but okay. that. Main... I just wanted to clarify that because yes. I was going to have to start a protest. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 okay. no. Yeah, no, it's just for that one that's got the barn. Yes, no, I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah. They're going to rehab the whole, the other part. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm all for yeah. the building. I'm yes. Just, I'm, 100% yes. that. Yeah, a, we wouldn't want them either because that's historical, that yeah, other is. That and, yeah. And so that, I think they're going to renovate it. At, so. at some point, I'd like to see the old jail renovated. Yeah, I know. And that would be cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.